So my wife needs this workout bench made. Here's the sketch. You can see, it's nothing super complicated. And I'm all set to build it. But she sat me down yesterday and said, listen, I know you're an artist and everything, but you have a habit of turning everything into a giant production. And I need this thing now. So you don't get to take a month on it. Go down there and get it done in a week. You hear me, Rembrandt? I was like, okay, okay, I get it. Guilty. I, I make things too complicated sometimes. No problem. A week. That's Friday. Today's Tuesday. Time is a factor here. So, here's the foot for the piece, and then here's one of the legs. The legs need to go in the foot like this. Now, this is really obvious from a joinery standpoint. You would mortise and tenon these two together. No problem. But because of the way I've designed this thing, that's eight mortises and eight tenons just for securing the legs to the feet and to the bench top. That's a lot of work. Even if I do it with machine tools, that's going to take me like most of a day. I need a quicker way to get this done. Luckily, I've got one. I'm going to do almost all the joinery for this on the lathe. And I'm going to do it in like an hour. Unless something falls off and smacks me in the face, in which case I'm going to do it in an hour plus a trip to the emergency room. So, like four hours. So, we all know that the lathe is great for doing bowls and like Harry Potter wands or whatever, but you can also do furniture joinery on them. And this is something that chair makers have known about for a long time. You can make mortises and tenons that are just round. So I can take this piece, take it over the lathe, turn a tenon on the end of it, and then for making the mortise, all I have to do is drill a corresponding hole into the foot or into the top. It's not very complicated. But before we get to that, let's do some layout. I'll use my combination square to measure in an inch and a half from the end of each leg and then carry that line across two faces of the piece of wood. And I'm going to make those pencil marks nice and dark so that even when the lathe is spinning, I'll still be able to see my layout lines really clearly. The turning technique here is really straightforward. I use my diamond parting tool to turn down to one inch in diameter on either end of the tenon that I'm making. Then once I've got the diameters on either end established, I just grab a gouge and turn down most of the wood on either end of my parting line. Then I finish off with a square nose scraper. Now, because my calipers can widen up a little bit as I'm using them, I've got a scrap of hardwood that I drilled out to one inch, and I use that to check the fit of my tenons. And hey, if you're a new turner or thinking about getting into turning and topics like this interest you, I'd like to recommend the book I just wrote. It's called One Week to Wood Turning, and it's a complete guide to the equipment of turning as a hobby or an art form. It tells you all about lathes, tools, grinders, grinding wheels, grinding jigs, setting up a turning studio, finding wood, finishing, and everything else. The book is 154 pages long, it's got 65 completely original illustrations, and it covers just about everything you could possibly need to know. So if you're a new turner or thinking about turning, go ahead and click on the link down in the description. I've got a page with more information and you can see if you're interested in buying the book, which also really helps the channel out a lot. Once the tenons are done, it's time to make the mortises. And unlike a traditional mortise and tenon where you have to make a square hole, in this case, making the mortise just means drilling it out with a regular old Forstner bit. I'm using the drill press to make sure it comes out straight and a backer board so I don't get any blowout. So now my mortises are all cut in my feet and I'm ready to make them on the top. But I have a couple of problems. For one thing, I want all the mortises to line up perfectly so that when I install the legs, nothing's tilting to one side or the other. I also need the holes to be straight up and down. And what I would usually do is do that in the drill press, but this thing's 42 inches long, it's just difficult to get up on the drill press table. So I'm going to kill a couple birds with one stone here. I'm going to take my foot and actually use that as the drilling template for the top. So I'm going to place it just like this, and then I have a pair of combination squares. I'm going to go use one from the side here, and then I'm going to use another one in from the edge. And that lets me know that I'm square, and my holes are positioned over marks that I previously made in the top. And then I'm going to clamp this down and just drill in through each one of these with a handheld drill. And that's going to accomplish two things. My mortises are going to line up exactly because I'm just transferring them from the foot to the top. And even though I'm using a hand drill, these holes are going to be straight up and down because I'm using this as a drilling jig. So here are all the parts to my bench. And it's pretty quick to put together. So 
So the mortises and tenons were quick to make, and the bench goes together really fast. And because all the mortises were just drilled with a Forstner bit, they're identical. And the tenons are very close to identical. So unlike a traditional square mortise and tenon setup, all the tenons fit into all the mortises equally well. Now there are still a couple of things I need to do before I glue this piece up. The overall structure is really good, but because this is a workout bench and people are going to be either sitting or standing or sometimes climbing up and down right in the middle here, it's very important that the bench be able to resist flexing in the middle, and there's no support there. And what's going to happen is as the middle wants to flex in a little bit, the legs are going to want to flex out. I can make the whole system much more rigid by just having a single stretcher that connects the legs together. For that stretcher, I'm just going to use this single piece of hardwood. Now, I've done all the rest of my tenoning on the lathe, but this piece is too long. It's not going to fit. And mortise and tenon also isn't ideal for this because I want it to resist pulling force. So instead of doing a mortise and tenon on the lathe or even by hand, I'm going to do one big dovetail at either end of this board, and then I'm going to mortise out a triangular opening in each of the feet so that the stretcher can just sink right in. And that's going to give me a wedge-shaped mechanical interlock so that the bench by itself resists flexing and racking, and it'll keep doing that even if the glue joint starts to go bad over time. Now as far as assembly goes, it's pretty obvious that I could just put glue in all of the mortises pop all the tenons in, clamp it up, and walk away. That would probably work fine, but I can do better than that, and I can make a joint that resists twisting forces a lot better. Since these tenons are round, there is a bit of a tendency for them to want to rotate as stress is applied, but it's really easy for me to mitigate that. I'm going to split each of my tenons with a fine tooth saw and then drive in a hardwood wedge after the glue is applied. And that's going to make the tenon swell in the hole and it's going to give me a strong mechanical interlock that's going to make that joint very unlikely to come apart in the future. The procedure for doing this is very simple. I'm going to take a contrasting hardwood. It doesn't really matter what you use. I like walnut just because it looks cool. I'm going to cut eight thin wedges of that. I want them to taper down to nothing at the narrow end and only be maybe an eighth of an inch at the striking end. And when I slit these tenons, I have to make sure I'm doing it in the right direction. If I slit and wedge the tenon along the direction of the grain of this top, I'm going to split the whole thing right apart when I drive the wedges in. So the wedges have to be perpendicular to the top. When I glue the whole thing up, I can spread glue on all the surfaces, assemble the piece, pound in the wedges, and I'm not even going to need any clamps because that wedging action is going to provide all the clamping force I could ask for. Once all the wedges are in, I can just walk away. And then the next day, when the glue is dry, I can flush cut all of my tenons, sand, and finish the piece, and I'm done. And the final piece is exactly what I was looking for. When my wife's not using it to work out, it looks good enough that it can just be part of the furniture in our living room. I especially like the round, wedged mortise and tenon, and how it looks coming up through the top. I love the contrast of the white oak and the dark walnut, and how they play off each other. Now, the joint poking through like this does have a little bit of a rustic look, but I also used reclaimed wood for the top, so the two things go together really well, and they'll fit in fine in our living room. And because I used this round, wedged mortise and tenon and did it on the lathe, it was way quicker than cutting traditional square mortise and tenons. I got the whole project done in a couple of days, and that's pretty fast for a scratch-built piece of furniture. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Rex, it's great that it was fast, but is it strong? Well, I weigh about 225, so yeah, it's strong. And hey, if you're new to this channel, this is pretty much all I do around here. I try to make woodwork, metalwork, and other craft skills inexpensive and accessible so that you can make things that you need and express yourself creatively. I don't run ads, I don't do sponsored content, and I don't take free stuff from companies. So the only way this channel can grow and thrive is if I get the support of my viewers. If you're interested in contributing to what I do around here, go over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger. You can get early access to all of my videos, plus blog posts, book reviews, tool reviews, giveaways, sneak peeks, polls, and all sorts of other stuff that's only available for my patrons. And let me just stop and thank my patrons so much for all their help. 
especially recently when my patron James Boatwright has been helping me try to find a new camera and bring my production levels up a little bit. I'm really lucky that my patrons don't just give me money, but they also collaborate with me. They're part of a community, and we're all trying to make the channel better together. And I appreciate that so much. And I also really appreciate having viewers. So if you're watching, thanks so much for watching.